Warning, this video is intended for adult collectors. It contains plastic collectibles, questionable opinions, and someone that's given too much money to Hasbro. Do not panic. This is just a random review. Before we begin, thank you very much to Forever One for joining the Patreon campaign. Very appreciated. Thank you very much for the support. I owe you a review request, or a video request, I should say. So leave that somewhere for me to actually see, uh, and I will get on that ASAP. Um, so, as of right now, um, is as I am recording these, I am completely caught up on my shoutouts. So I have no idea if I'm going to have one waiting for me on Monday to get back to keep the train going. But in just in case, thank you guys for so much for keeping it going since February 1st. It's been absolutely insane. So with that, yes, we are reviewing a third-party toy today. So I will leave you to that. And I'm going to go ahead and apologize for how poorly the transformation footage was shot in this one. So I decided that since it was my birthday today, I wasn't just going to do a review catch-up for the Sunday video. I was going to do something really out there and different. And fortunately... Someone gave me the opportunity to do that. A buddy of mine, Ranma Leopard, actually got me this off of my throne. If you don't know what a throne is, it's basically a public wish list for creators, uh, for anyone who wants to get something for them. I don't ask anyone to use it. It's there just in case you want to. And if you want to use it, please do so responsibly. Don't go spending on me if you can't afford it. But, uh, yeah, this came in, and... Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is not something I would normally get for myself, so thank you very, very much for doing it. So I figured, let's review it. That's the only fair thing to do in this situation, right? So this is Iron Factory's Daishogun Bomaru. So, guess what? We're just going to call it Samurai Grimlock from here on out in the review, because that really is what it is. And I do really like Iron Factory's Samurai idea. This is third party I can get behind, because it's doing something so different and unique. You know, this is fun. This is crazy third party that should be the thing, not just filling in gaps in Masterpiece or micro scale every Transformer. No. This, this is where I, I am happy. So yeah, it's Grimlock. He is done up in a metallic gunmetal gray from head to toe and absolutely littered with paint apps in gold and silver and red. And man, it just looks so nice. Let me take you the full tour of the body. Let's do that. Look how vicious and mean the head is. Got that little bit of red wire on the underside, which kind of gives you like that the, the strap look on a samurai's helmet uh, going around on the chin. Got this nice silver face mask with the gold accents on it. Horned T-Rex, by the way, because we needed this design to look sharper. So let's give him horns as well. He's got spines going up and down his back. He's got scaling that actually looks like the shoulder guards on a samurai's armor, which you can clearly see here down the thigh as well lots more gold accents there we've got the same type of armor appearing on his tiny little t-rex arms so even they get the armor treatment and they're fully painted in silver by the way here we go to the leg which i should probably not disguise because there's a ton of paint there too lots of silver lots of gold man it's just so much so much paint app we get to the back where there is more gold down the back side, the tail, really interestingly done. And the ends on this big curved blade and a ball, this red ball in the back. This feels like something like, like a glaive that a sorcerer would have, not a samurai. But I do like the look. I do think it looks super cool. I mean, the aesthetic is just so unique. Just the idea of combining G1 Transformer characters with samurai aesthetic works so so well for me you know and it really does like give you this vibe of like what if transformers landed in the feudal era and i really really like that so he's a little bit loaded down right now you can see his two swords on the back um i'm just going to say long katana short katana i know i know japan has very specific names for the lengths of its weapons but in my defense 
I can't really measure out proportion on a toy like this, so I'm not exactly sure what length the name works. Needless to say, he comes with two katanas that actually fit on the back of his beast mode, which uh, I, I, I need to wait to unpeg apparently because what's in the way are these, which are akin to the flags the samurai would wear on his back, which I think that's super cool. I think it's cooler the fact that they're actually just a pair of big meat cleavers that he gets to have. So we're going to go ahead and take those off, and then I'm going to go ahead and pull off these pieces as well. All of these have these little extra holsters that you can slide them into, and that is what attaches them. So we'll be removing those once we get to the robot mode and actually showing off uh, how uh, you can arm up your Grimlock. Uh, as far as articulation goes in this mode, ball joints at the shoulder point on the arm, so that works like so. The thighs actually do work as well. The hips have up and down range as well as a little bit of outward. Uh, you can tilt the actual toes of the beast mode to give him a little bit more stability if you want to try for a wide-legged pose, but it's not really the most uh, viable option there. If we go into the head, he can open and shut his jaw uh, on both sides. So, yeah, and then you can have him with different angles and expressions that way. Uh, it's only up and down, doesn't really work left and right. Uh, nothing in the tail either. There's a lot of different elements to how the transformation works. It's going to limit a lot of the articulation in the beast mode, but it does look really cool regardless. I will say on mine, I do have some tolerance issues. Uh, the panels here that make up the underside of him, they should be tabbing into what is the side of his legs, but they don't quite reach on mine. I might have something misaligned in the transformation, but I've tried it multiple times. I can't quite get it. And everything else lines up fine, so I'm not entirely sure what went wrong, or if that's just a design flaw. With a third-party toy, it could be either, so I'm just leaving it as such. So... We need to transform this, and admittedly, one reason I don't review much third party is because uh, transforming these things is so much more complicated than an actual transformer, so uh, <laughs> you'll forgive me if I just kind of fumble my way through this. All right, so for starters, I'm going to take this armor that covers the front of the legs and remove it to the sides. Uh, we're going to go ahead and straighten the arms out and then go down here. Uh, let's see. Flip this forward, you're going to have to rotate the claws around and then bring all of that up like so. That's going to expose his fists. So we'll do the same thing here on the underside. Go ahead and flip that like that. All right, so that should be the arms. And now everything else, if I can remember how to do this correctly. Uh, if your side panels are tabbed in, go ahead and untab them. Uh, I'm going to... Double hinge the thighs of the T-Rex outward, getting them out of the way and ready to go into their robot mode position. Go ahead and open that up, clear them out of the way. Um, also, we'll disengage the front of the neck, which is going to swing all the way down along with the arms. Going to get those cleared out. All right. With that out of the way, we can go ahead and open up the back. Like so, we're gonna have to rot we're gonna have to like spin a lot of this around here in a bit. But for now, uh, what I want to do is uh, separate the next section. So that's going to uh, that's going to free a lot of the head. The next section actually includes the jaw, and then the actual like top. I'm sorry, it's getting out of view here. Uh, yeah, so the next section here. Uh, opens all the way up like so. That's going to carry these side panels along with it, which is where the robot mode feet are. And the top of the head is this big accordion section, which is going to fold up all the way out of the way so we can start the next phase of the transformation. So go ahead and take these jaw components. Uh, ow. They are very sharp teeth. They are biting me as I do this. Uh, double hinge them like so. Then we're going to rotate or double hinge the legs out like that. That's the knee joint doing the work there. All right, with that done, I'm going to start getting these panels into their actual 
robot mode positions, rotate them around like such. There is the foot. So we bring this down, make sure that tabs in like so, and then bring this panel over and tab like that. That's going to create the clean leg. Let me do that on the other side and make sure it stays in frame because this is hard for me to do. Like I said, it's a little bit complicated, so I'm trying to be very delicate about it. I also don't want to break it. So it's uh, unfortunately coming out of camera view once in a while. But yeah, there you go. Folding up the back and the neck together creates the legs. Unique for a Grimlock toy. I like that. All right. So I'm going to get this out of the way. We're going to deal with that later. Go ahead and rotate all this around. It's going to bring all the nice robot mode details to the front. Go ahead and lower the arms. Get them ready for their spot. <clears throat> the tail needs to be split now. So I hope you got some thumbnails because this is a pretty tight fit. All right. Get this open from the tip. All right. There we go. They have a double hinge to them to bring them out like so. They also have uh, another hinge component here to rotate them around with. Uh, you need to get them into a... Uh, ace. The goal is to get them into a position where these point up forward like so. So we're trying to get these leg halves to hinge forward like this. Yeah, this toy fights me a little bit. Rotate it across like that. Go ahead and close the tail up around it. Rotate that around. And that's what it's going to look like. So that's going to create uh, a little bit of an homage to his original backpack shell which is not a bad touch from here rotate the head around i'm going to fold these double hinge shoulders back into this position it's going to give you these nice high up shoulders give them a nice powerful physique all right and then we just clean up the back like so so if i bring all this up Hang that there on the sides. It's going to form side armor for him. Just to make sure you saw it. That's where all that arm in the neck section went. The neck forms the back armor. Arms form the little tiny armor on the sides. And then from there, it's really just like make sure that this Grimlock head accordions all the way into the back like so. Should all tab into place. And that's going to be his transformation. Like I said, it's really complicated and I'm sorry for how many times that went out of frame. I know it's uh, it's a little bit frustrating when you go to a review and someone is trying to demonstrate the, the transformation. You're trying to figure out how to transform it and the guy won't keep it in frame. I apologize for that. Uh, but I don't really cover for that. I cover for my personal experience. And my personal experience is that's a really cool transformation. It doesn't feel anything like a normal Grimlock outside of maybe how it handles the T-Rex legs becoming the robot arms. But even that's got some unique twists to it. So, yeah, like it is a very different feeling Grimlock, which you would expect of something that turns into this. This is a pretty big difference in a typical Grimlock. Let me show you. The head sculpt is so freaking cool. Look at that. Look at that. You got the Shogun head in there so, so nicely. Like all the detail is done correctly. He's got this big, like, Really lavish helmet design, but it also works in his traditional elements, too. You can see his normal horns poking up through behind it. So that all works out really, really nicely. And, yeah, the paint is just done so well. The translucent orange pops really, really well. Uh, it's the right kind of translucent to do for eyes because it just glows no matter what kind of light hits it. Ah, oh, it's so good, so good. I'm going to stick in this close-up just to show you just how much paint is going on in this toy. You've got silvers, golds, lots of red to imitate the original G1's red. A little, you know, and then just like how detailed it is to make it look like the sh like samurai armor all the way throughout the toy. It's done, it's done such a phenomenal job. Take a look at how detailed the feet are. Even the feet look so freaking good, like everything around the gold the red the silver in i can't say enough good things about the deco like even the clear plastic is being used correctly <clears throat> there's nothing that is a uh, <clears throat> structurally relying on the translucence in this toy it's just there for artistic effect and it's 
very, very much appreciated. Now, one thing about this is that since this is an Iron Factory toy, it is on the short side. If you want to actually see how short, we'll bring him in with Beachcomber here. So, height-wise, they're about the same. Grimlock is a little bit bigger, uh, but yeah, uh, far more detailed, as you can tell. Uh, yeah, it's hard to stack the two against each other. So, he's on the small side of Deluxe, as far as like what you would expect for the scale of the character. As long as we're doing like size comparisons, because I know that's important for third party stuff. Let's actually bring in a normal size deluxe of DevCon. So your height is somewhere in the between the two, just so you know exactly where you're going for here. Iron Factory typically does uh, what's usually called pocket scale. Tiny figures that are very easy for your desk to fit. And he, like most, like most, uh, like most Dinobots would end up much larger than the rest of their assortment, which would make sense would make sense so yeah i cannot get over just how much paint and detail went into this toy it looks absolutely phenomenal and it hits the samurai notes so so hard so can we extend this oh absolutely we can so articulation wise let me do that real quick so we can get into accessories so yep the neck ball jointed that works shoulders ball jointed They've got nice range of motion. It gets a little bit hindered because there's so much kibble going on here if you try to go this way. But for the most part, yeah, it's pretty well articulated. You've got a bicep rotation that works nicely. Nice, nice double jointed elbow. Ball joint at the wrist, so all that works really, really nicely. Waist joint is also ball jointed, so he's got kind of an ab crunch effect as well. His full rotation. Thighs. And, uh, you know, thighs fully rotate. The hips are universal. A little bit of hindrance, but not too bad. Knees go to 90 degree. Nice to see. Actually, yeah, actually double jointed knee. Double jointed knee works great there too. Full ball joint in the ankle. So tons and tons of posability range. Tops what we'd expect out of a typical deluxe, which I would expect out of a third party toy. No real shock there. We can arm him up. We can actually do a bunch of things to uh, enhance what is already a super cool design. So, um, for starters, he's got these big things. I'm going to go ahead and take this off. Um, I believe if you want to actually have him mounted as... If you actually want to have these as like his uh, as like actual samurai flags, you can peg, peg these into the holes that are in this tail which I haven't actually done, and I can't quite get the clearance here, but mm, there you go. You get the idea. So if you want him to actually have the samurai flag look, he can have that. So I love that they worked that in as well. In a similar note, there are holes on the sides of his hip armor here, which I can actually attach the blades to. So if you want him to wield in his katanas, in the more traditional style, he can do that as well. So, you have ways of storing the weapons and making him look cool at the same time. Awesome there. That's not enough accessory, though, because you actually get an array of spare hands, which is nice to see. You have the splayed out hand, which works really, really nicely. You can see even the hands are painted. They're softer materials, so they're not going to break if you drop them or anything. You have two different hands for holding on two swords. You have one that will hold it straight up and one that will hold the sword at an angle, meaning you get a lot more range out of things. And I love having swords in that kind of pose. Switching the hands out, very easy. It's a very soft uh, joint that holds it in place. And then just pick out which one you want. Plug it in like so. And we'll go ahead and take his bright orange katana and slide it in. And there is your angled look which can give you uh, much more like nuanced poses as opposed to just like standard fists, which I always, always really appreciate when they do. So yeah, tons of weapon accessories. And then that doesn't even get into these big meat cleavers of his. So this isn't just a set of meat cleavers. Uh, this is already cool enough if you just wanted to go around bashing things. However, you can also flip that little post up and then do the cool thing, which is to combine them into one gigantic sword, which can also bash things far more effectively. 
Nice little touch. Nice little touch. I love how much use there is in these. I kind of don't like the fact that you have additional little bits that you have to keep track of in order to make some of it work. But for what it is, yeah, that's actually pretty cool. So, Daishogun Bomaru, Iron Factory's Samurai Grimlock. This thing is pretty amazing. Like, and I know I didn't even do a really proper job of showing off everything it can do. This is just kind of like reactionary kind of review style, but man, it works so freaking well. I love how much detail went into it. I love how uh, articulated it is for its size. Uh, the transformation takes a couple turns because there is a lot going on in it. But once you're beyond that, you've got an amazing figure. Uh, not something I would normally get for myself because they are expensive for the size. But I do really appreciate what they created here and I love how well it turned out. It's absolutely awesome. So thank you once again, uh, Ranma, for getting it for me. Really do appreciate that. And thank you everyone for watching as I just go through random toys that I have lying around. Uh, I hope this was informative. I hope this week has been informative. Uh, so um, I'll be coming home from Metricon soon and I will see you then. I'm like, I think you guys got this. I will back away and I will see you all later. You've got this handled. <laughs> Alafi's like, really? You're not gonna help me? Like, it's my now. It's like, these disgusting <laughs> creatures breathing down my neck and you're all just like, I believe in you, you got this. That all burn. right, you seem He's... to have this. Five minutes. <laughs> <laughs>